All right, folks, well, we are here at Overland Expo Pacific Northwest. This is the first time we've attended this event, and it's been awesome. And if you're familiar with Pacific Northwest content, then you are familiar with this guy right here. Jason and I have been friends for, shoot, what has it been, like five or six years now? I think it was 2018 when we met at the, at the Flagstaff Expo, and then we went out and had a little camp after that. So, yeah, it's been since, you know, about five years. Yeah. I've asked Jason to give us kind of a walk around of what he's built here. But my first question is, so the last time that we met you was when you were in a Ford F-250? Ford F-250. And I think you were towing a trailer at the I time. I was, I had the CVT trailer yeah. with the CVT tent. Yeah, so <laughs> what led you to switch to a van? Well, I mean, even before that setup, I always lusted <laughs> after a van. Yeah. Um, when I saw my first sportsmobile on uh, when I was just kind of Google searching things and kind of researching before I even really knew about overlanding uh -huh. and I was just researching uh, truck camping basically uh, a picture of a sportsmobile came up and I knew that that was my dream mm -hmm. right there that was my dream vehicle yeah um, but we know the sportsmobiles were a little bit spendy uh -huh. so um, you know I just kind of continued down the road of what I could afford and what I could do at the time. Mm -hmm. So we that's uh, so we went through a lot of different camping iterations yeah. till we finally did start to make this happen. And what it basically came down to is instead of um, waiting till I can afford a four wheel drive, I just bought a two wheel drive and just said, we got to start somewhere, just start somewhere right. and, just, and just start figuring it out from there. So tell me a little bit of the history of the van. Where did you end up finding this thing? So I actually found it right here in Bend. It was a very just stock, old, pretty worn out, two wheel drive, standard cargo van, because they're standard and extended, mm -hmm. but a standard 4350. Uh, I bought it for 2200 bucks. I knew it wasn't what I wanted, but it was a starting point. Well, clearly you've done a lot to it. So I guess maybe starting here in the front, what we got on the, the bumper here. So uh, this is a custom bumper that was made by AJ's 4x4 Vans out of Hillsboro. And then I've got the Warren M15S uh, winch, which I have <laughs> used many times. Yeah. We've got uh, diode dynamic lights on the front, which I absolutely love. Yeah, a couple anchor points. Uh, headlight upgrade? N uh, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say they're anything super special. It's just some cheap old LEDs that yeah. I found on Amazon, but mm -hmm. over the stock lights that came on this year are big. They are a huge improvement, yeah. Well, I guess next, let's talk about running gear because that's really what takes this from being just a cargo hauler to an adventure mobile, right? Right, I originally got the four wheel drive conversion done. It was a very basic four wheel drive conversion and the handling on it wasn't uh, as good as I had hoped. Mm -hmm. So I had a local fab guy here in Bend do a lot of work to it. Basically, you got Ford F-250 running gear underneath. So the, I've got a Danny 60 up in the front and I have the Sterling 10 bolt in the back. Okay. And then they take the transmission and you can either buy go and buy the same transmission but out of a four wheel drive truck or you can just have yours modified so you can get a transfer case to actually hooked to it. All of that's gonna change. I'm not gonna get into that probably too much in this video, but <laughs> all of that's gonna change down the line. I do have an Atlas for it coming soon. The, some of the handling characteristics weren't where I really wanted them. So I got a custom radius arm that helped the caster angle, which made the uh, drivability down the highway much better. And then we did custom track bar mounts and a custom track bar to uh, match the geometry of the drag link so that that way we also uh, got rid of the bump steer. Oh, wow. Those are beautiful. So tires, how are you liking the Maxxis? Well, the Maxxis are pretty new to me. I haven't had really a chance to put them through. I actually only got them on about a month and a half ago okay. and it's been I've had some situations with a little bit of mud, but uh, not too many, so I haven't really got to push them through. I've been a lot of highway driving on them. Uh, they're fine, they don't seem overly noisy. I have heard that they have a chance of wearing a little bit faster, but I was looking for something that was still an AT, but would be a little bit more aggressive when I'm in snow and mud. Gotcha. And then I've got the Method uh, Racing Wheels. I don't remember the exact model on these, but if people are looking, 
They are the ones with the bead grip technology. Okay. Uh, so they, they're, they're not bead locks, but they definitely hold the tire much harder. Mm. Uh, so you can air it down and not have to worry about it slipping. Gotcha. How low have you gone with these? I have gone as low with this, with this rig, as heavy as it is, I've gone as low as 15 pounds. Oh, wow. Holy cow. So looks like you've got the proper armor set up here as well. Tell me about your sliders and looks like it ties all the way up to the roof. Yeah, so these are the original sliders. Uh, I do like them very well. I do wish I would have had them. This was my fault. I should have had them make these a little bit wider because mm. getting in and out of the van, they're a little narrow. Gotcha. But uh, they do the job. And then the original ladder that was done, this was originally, you know, it's gone through phases. We've linexed the entire van. Yeah. And then we just recently added the high top. And then we got the linex match. That was all done in Seaside, Oregon. And then again, the same guy who redid my four wheel drive uh, built me this custom two piece rack. So the nice thing about this rack is if it was one piece, it would take equipment yeah. to get it off yeah. like a forklift. Uh -huh. But since we built a two piece, me and Aaron, who you just met, yeah. uh, actually put this on with just ladders. You know, wow. so it's very, very easy to take on and off and it's actually extremely light. Wow. So did that change the handling characteristics of the van much? I did not notice uh, really any difference uh, having the rack on versus just the high top by itself. Gotcha, gotcha. And you had this done in Utah, right? Yes, the high top was put on by Wasatch Overland in uh, just outside of Salt Lake City. Yeah, they do some pretty cool stuff. Yeah, no, they do really great van builds. I see you got a Max fan working up there too, huh? Yep, on top we got Max fan and then I've got 300 watts of solar and a flat mounted Starlink. And that right there, how's the, uh, how's the Starlink working for you? The Starlink works great. I, I, I have ran into like one issue with it being flat, and that is if you get water pooling on top of the Starlink. I've had some signal issues there, but most of the time it works great. And that little issue doesn't outweigh how convenient it is <laughs> having it always out and hooked up. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I, I mean, I would do it again in a heartbeat. Okay. I'd do it again in a heartbeat. Okay. You have an inverter inside running it then? I do have an inverter inside. There okay. is some other options like you can get from them that is a 12 volt one. They didn't have that one available at the time I did mine. Um, but I also looked at here at the expo, I looked at a, a router that you can get for the Starlink that, get, that would switch it to 12 volt. and um, that might be something I'm interested in I'll do in the future. Oh, cool. Yeah, that would make it a little more efficient, I think. Yeah, so yeah. the router is still, you would still have the same cord going up to the Starlink, but the router itself runs on 12 volt. Okay, gotcha. All right, so you say this is probably one of your favorite additions. <laughs> so I just recently, so last year I added a heat exchanger to the van uh, and it worked pretty good, but it was a very basic setup you know water in through the heat exchanger water out but i had no control over the system so it was either too cold or too hot so what i've recently done is i've got this bigger tote which i put water in and then i've got uh water in and a water out that circulates water through through the heat exchanger that is hooked to my heater core lines and it warms the water in the in this tank to keep the water from getting too warm i have a therm thermostatically controlled relay that opens a valve and allows the water to pass through the heat exchanger when the water's too cold. Once it gets up to the temperature that I want, it shuts off that control valve and doesn't, and the water doesn't continue to circulate anymore. So that way the water gets up to a perfect temperature. If I get to kind of messing around and I don't get out here and take a shower right away, as soon as it drops five degrees, it'll reopen the valve and start circulating again and get it back up. So I always know that when I do come out here for the shower, I'll have a perfectly temped shower every time. That's ingenious, man. And uh, no privacy tent? No privacy tent right <laughs> yet, but that's part of my bumper. I gotta do some replacements on my bumper, which uh -huh. uh, we'll see down the line, but I eventually will have a, a privacy tent off the back. Gotcha. And I'll move my shower head off the back when that happens, gotcha. but that's my plan. But yeah, a couple of people have seen more Primal Outdoors than they probably wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard stories. <laughs> It's like the Sasquatch. <laughs> so let's get to the meat of the subject and the living space and storage space. I mean, this right. thing's gargantuan compared to a lot of stuff we see out here. So this is what I consider my garage area underneath and putting the high top on was huge because this gave me a lot more space. And one of the big things that I added to the van that's really helped me be able to stay out in locations longer is more food storage and not just any food storage, but freezer food storage. So I've got a 60 liter ice co and this is 
all nothing but freezer so I can fill this up and this along with the 50 liter refrigerator I have up front uh, allows me to stay out in locations a lot longer without having to make trips back to the grocery store for fresh food. Gotcha. I've got tools in here. I've got recovery gear. I got an empty pub beer box. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, I've got some shower stuff. This is you know kind of my shower kit and gotcha. some other random things. But mm -hmm. basically, it's just storage and and the freezer. Uh, back here and and a lot of my tools and recovery kit this is the bed and okay. it, right now it's kind of in couch mode so you see that like the back oh, of it pushed up so okay. it's it's like this yeah yeah uh, and then of course it goes down uh -huh. and we can we'll see that more once we get around to the front cool all right so big freezer obviously you've got some onboard power for this system what's your aux setup yeah so i have back in here i have two battleborn 100 amp hour batteries uh, they're being charged by a manager 30 but I also added an additional um, red arc 25 amp so I give a total of 55 amps when the vehicle is running mm. in order to have enough power to do that, it's very important I also upgraded the alternator on the vehicle so it's a 270 amp alternator at idle wow. I have a 1000 watt inverter it's not the hugest but it covers what I pretty much want to do for editing and the devices I run mm -hmm. and I also have the Red Arc Red Vision which is how I basically monitor everything and I can control like things like lights and turning on different different um, apparatuses like I have an a air compressor that goes into a tank down here and when I want to turn on that air compressor I can just go to my Red Arc on my phone app and turn it on and that way I can get around and air up my tires. What are you doing for air compressor? Right now I have the Viair 450P, but I actually talked to Viair <laughs> while I'm here and I think I'm going to switch to their du new dual compressor system. Since I do have a five gallon tank, if I can you know, air that tank and have the dual air compressor system, I'm hoping that it can maintain while I'm going from tire to tire so that I get faster fill ups. Oh, that would be sweet. And then nice swing out bumper back here too with some goodies. Yeah, so right now this is very temporary. Uh, many who follow my channel know that I broke my other swing out on this bumper. And so I've just rigged some things up temporarily. So I've got a shovel, um, an ax holder. This is something I actually designed and then had uh, made by Oshkut in Utah. I found this uh, sh chainsaw holder and they're all separate. This is in this mount I actually uh, found online trail recon store. I bought that off his store. Oh, cool! And Shout uh, out to the, Brad. <laughs> and then I yeah, and then I put uh, yeah, made a shovel and axe holder to mount to it, and then I found this to mount to it, and then this Sons of Smoky uh, nonprofit that helps clean up our BLM. Okay. You know, so wow. I try to support them by buying one of their trail bags. And then looks like you've got shore power here. Yeah. So this is shore power. This is actually obsolete right now because this is how I used to hook up the Starlink when it was still on the stand. Uh, and this is where I'd get out, put it up on the rack, and then run an RJ45 cable in here. Okay. I've got an idea mm -hmm. what I'm gonna use this for in the future that has to do with my personal shop mm -hmm. uh, and providing um, internet to the shop. Yeah. But uh, right now it's, it, it doesn't do anything. But this is um, my, yeah, this here is my shore power. So if I am somewhere that has uh, power and I need to charge van house batteries, I can just plug in there. Gotcha. Now we get to where the, the magic happens, right? Yep. Sorry. So, and there's a lot of clutter because we've just been here at the expo. Hey, <laughs> we're all about real life situations. That's what these adventure ready videos are all about. So, right. So uh, this is kind of my little pantry door. This is my outdoor cooking setup. This stove actually fits in here when it's stored. And this is where I, you know, spend a lot of my time doing outdoor cooking uh -huh. uh, when the weather's nice and um, nice to be outside. And then, of course, I've got the 230 uh, Paragon on on top, so that's nice for providing me some shade. Yeah. And our situation was very hot here this weekend, uh. <laughs> but it also gives me some cover when it's raining or snowing. Right. It's and also you, it's also where we keep the whiskey. I was going to say there's there's nothing more quintessential than uh, Pendleton and Primal Outdoors, right? So and then over here we just got a, a fold up shelf, and this is just great for I use this a lot for preparing food mm -hmm. and just anything. Right now it's just got a lot of stuff on it and then I, I keep a few basic seasonings here 
um, ones I use all the time. Mm -hmm. And but my main seasoning rack is up in there. Okay. But when I'm cooking outside, I usually try to keep it basic. So I just got basic salt and pepper and a couple of other basics that I use. Gotcha. When I'm cooking inside, this is still very accessible to me when I'm inside. So I just kind of pull from whatever I need. A little bit of both. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you got another fridge in here. Yeah. So this is yeah. So this is the actual fridge fridge. Uh huh. Uh, this is JP50 comes out and yeah so this is just fridge and the other one back in the back is freezer wow so you can really <laughs> you can really stay out there yeah and you know that's my goal with the van is i like to get out in remote places of blm and set up and hike around and explore and i don't want to have to be making unnecessary trips back to town for the supplies so every little detail that i'm can working on or worked on or continue to work on is to that goal with the high top we uh, made some changes there's still some trim work in here that i haven't quite gotten to yet but you know i got to a point and decided i just wanted to go out and do some adventures and so i haven't finished everything but we got a little cabinet here i've got my cooking area up there i got a stove again i got my seasoning rack up there mm -hmm. window which is key that was a real nice add-on to the high top, oh, okay. being able to stand up and look out that way. Mm -hmm. It's really uh, nice when you're cooking or making coffee in the morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we got a you know, chair on a swivel seat, so this can flip around, go the other way if somebody's riding with me, but most of the time I like to use this area just to kind of hang out and sit and have a cup of coffee in the morning. Gotcha. Here we got um, my water system. So this is the fill tank for my water. I got a seven gallon tank, which isn't a lot. Mm -hmm. And then there's a pump back here that pumps the water right out of here. I don't have a sink, that was my choice because I didn't want to take up storage space with plumbing and um, sink. So I just kind of went with this and I'm happy enough with it and I don't think I would bother to change it. Up here, I've got two extra ports. This is actually connected to a water filtration system. So anywhere I can find a stream, a lake, any any type of what I would call like dirty water. Mm -hmm. um, I can filter it through here. It goes through a uh, sediment filter, a carbon block filter, and then through a UV filter. Wow. Goes in here, comes out here, and then I can feed it either straight into my tank to fill with clean water, or say if Kevin needed some water, mm -hmm. I could fill him up his water. I love the, uh, the Sasquatch touches too. <laughs> Yeah, and for those that aren't uh, familiar with my channel, the van's name is Sasquatch, so that's why there's all these little Sasquatch um, uh, little pieces around here. Yeah, good luck finding him. <laughs> yeah. I, I, people say, have you ever seen Sasquatch? And I say, I see him every day. <laughs> <laughs> so the bed, this is how the bed works. I've got two uh, drawers here. They're on 600-pound drawer slides. Okay. They, they come out. And then... The whole bed just pulls forward. Oh, nice. Okay. And that makes a full bed that is 55 by 75 inches. Wow. And you've got the uh, the classic Jason wood busting mall up there. Well, that I like that axe a lot, but my wood busting mall one, that's on the back of the okay. van. That one's, <laughs> that one's just a nice decoration. Yeah, that's beautiful. <laughs> And uh, looks like you got a Propex heater. I do. I do have a pro in. yeah. So that's the uh, heater controls. Uh, I do have a Propex heater down here. Is where the hot air comes out. Okay. And that ties into a uh, undermounted propane tank that I added a few years back. That's seven gallons. So all, everything that you see that's propane, the outside stove, the inside stove, the Propex. Uh, that's all run off a undermounted propane tank that I put in a couple years ago. So up front here, um, you can't really see it. I use my tablet here for navigation. I use Gaia mostly. It sits here on a mount. This mount was custom made up here. You can't, it's probably hard to see, but you can see I have a custom bar mount that goes all the way across the dash, comes down, ties into the floor. I've got my tablet so I can use either Gaia or Google, depending on what I'm doing. Got my cell phone here. This mount here is my uh, Garmin. If I'm somewhere where I can't, where the Starlink won't work because there's too many trees, I still use my Garmin for emergency. And then also I can mount some cameras when I'm filming and things like that. My buddy Scott, who's an electrician, helped me build that out at EMT. I got to make sure I tell him, put his name in there because he wants, he wants uh, recognition for that. Shout out to the Sparkies. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So. But that's probably one of my favorite things. That's like one thing that I absolutely could not live without is that bar and the, and my whole navigation setup there. Oh yeah, so much room for activities right there too. Yeah. 
And then looks like he got some extra storage even up up there. Yeah, so this is an area that's not finished. There eventually is going to be a board that would come back to here and kind of tie in and cover um, this area. But I've just gotten a little lazy and like I said, kind of want to do some uh, traveling. But this will eventually be a little bit tidier area and, and I, this is where I store uh, a lot of my clothing. And you did all the, the woodwork and cabinetry yourself, right? I did. I When I had the high top put on, I did have Wasatch help me real quick just out of expediency put on uh, the cedar paneling that's up here that's so they did all the cedar paneling and uh, you know when they put the high top on I did the lower paneling and everything before it was a high top and then I finished after that I came back and did a lot of finishing so I built this cabinet a little finish work around here but um, like I said details <coughs> Little, little details that still need to be done. It's never done though. Never done, never done. <laughs> it's always in a state of flux. All right, so since it's never done, what's next on the agenda? So uh, there's a couple, the, the biggest thing that I wanna talk about what I'm doing is, uh, again, we talk, I kind of mentioned briefly about the Atlas transfer case. With that, I've got the E4OD transmission uh, connected to a 5.8 liter motor. Uh, I'm going to stick with the 5.8 liter moving forward with this van. It's just proven to be absolutely reliable and it's simple and easy to work on. But I don't like the 4 speed. So we're putting a 6R80 uh, 6 speed transmission in from Ford. I've got an adapter kit, the 6R80, a 2 speed Atlas, uh, new um, drive lines. I've got all that part, but I still got a few other pieces. We're also going to, even though we're going to stick with the 5.8 liter, we are going to put the Holly Dominator system on it with injectors, a mass airflow sensor, new wiring harness and everything. And that's going to help us kind of tie everything together. And uh, we've got a US shift transmission controller that's going to allow us to uh, really control that new six speed and give me a lot more control of the van on the trail, especially when going up steep grades or going down steep grades. Wow. This thing's already a beast and that, that's going to make it a mountain goat. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's an upgrade I'm very, very much looking forward to getting I, that. I can totally understand. Yeah, I mean, I feel for me, the, the one of the key factors that I love over any setup that I have or have tried in the past is the ability to pull into a camp location when the weather is just horrible and be able to go straight from my front seat right into my living space and not have to get out in the rain or snow or whatever it's doing. And the, ca the cabin's already warm and comfortable and I can cook a meal and eat that meal and go to bed without even opening a door. That's that's awesome. That's the dream right there. Well, I appreciate giving us the quick tour of Sasquatch. And if you haven't checked out Jason's channel yet, where can they find you? Well, right now, I you know most people know me from Primal Outdoors. I am working on a new channel called Van Camping that I'm really excited about, and I think you guys will enjoy. Where I'm really focusing on creating the highest quality content I can of me going out and having you know, adventures in this van. All right, man. Well, it's been awesome getting a tour of Sasquatch here. Sarah and I, we secretly lust over this setup fairly often. And so you've definitely given me more ideas for the future. I mean, half the fun is trying different stuff. So. Right. But uh, thanks so much. It's been great hanging out with you again. We need to go ahead to trail together at some point as well. Yeah, no, it's been a lot. I and mean, like I said, it's great to finally get you guys in my neck of words so you guys can see just a little bit what we got going in here in the pacific northwest all right man well it looks like uh everybody's pulling out here at expo it's a wrap time to hit the trail we'll see you on the next one